Okay, so how is everyone today? <laughs> Good? <laughs> I can see that we need to have a homework due. <laughs> All right. So, uh, a few things. Uh, when we left, uh, we were uh, mentioning uh, average rate of change. So let's uh, finish that up. So today's the 19th. And uh, so just to remind you of what that was about, we could say let f uh, be defined on uh, the closed interval a to b. So calling that a closed interval because uh, it has both uh, the left endpoint and the right endpoint. So let f be defined on the closed interval a, b. Uh, and then uh, the average, average rate of change of f on a to b is, OK, so then, uh, well, the picture looks like this. So we've got some, uh, some, uh, the horizontal axis there, the input axis, and then uh, suppose that uh, we have a function that does this. You know, so does, uh, does that say? Uh, so we want to know, so if this red represents the plot of y is f of x, then, uh, you know, the last time we talked about it, uh, I, said it uh, I said one thing and, and said that's the same as this other thing, and now I'm going to say, say it put in reverse, just so I've said it both ways. Uh, suppose, that, uh, suppose that we take uh, the beginning point and uh, the ending point, so those two different points. And uh, suppose we uh, connect them with a line segment. So like this. So that line segment there. Then uh, the average rate of change is uh, what with respect to that line <laughs> segment? It's the slope of that. Is. <coughs> slope of, now, if you given a function on an interval, uh, on a closed uh, interval like that, where you have a, you have a, and you, and you draw that uh, line from the first point to the ending point, uh, such line segments are so, uh, so common and, and uh, important that they have a name. Do you remember the name uh, that we called it? Secant line. So is the slope uh, of the secant of f on, uh, on a to b. So we can, we can figure that out. Uh, you know, we want to know, we want to know, uh, you know, since, uh, since it's just a line, it's rise over run, right? So I'll say mm -hmm. delta, delta x and delta y. So, so uh, if, I, if I form this triangle right here, So that right triangle, then uh, that x position is uh, b, and that uh, x position is uh, a. So what's the what's the run there? So delta x is what? B minus a. And uh, all right. So the red function is uh, the the red is the the function. So uh, this input is named A. So uh, what's our name for the height of that uh, output? How tall is it? Well, that's, uh, that's F of A. 
That's what the plot is saying. So that height there is a f of a. So this height is the same height, so it's f of a. And what's this height? f of b. So uh, that being the case, uh, what's the uh, what's the rise? How tall is that? Very good. So delta y is f of b minus f of a. Uh, so the slope of the secant line, the average rate of change, is delta y divided by delta x, which is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. All right. So let's have a quick, quick example. I could say something like, uh, I could say let, uh, let uh, h of w be uh, 2 w squared minus, uh, minus w and then uh, plus 5, something like that. Uh, and then uh, this is going to be defined on uh, the interval um, negative 2 to uh, 4. So the first request is uh, find the average rate of change of h on that, on that, uh, on that interval. So that's the first request. And then the second request is going to be uh, find, uh, find uh, the equation of the secant of h uh, on negative 2 to 4. All right. Well, I mean, this first thing is just like literally just using the formula, right? So, uh, so should there be a delta x? Should there be a delta x? No, right? Shouldn't be a delta x. Uh, because remember, in this picture, x is just the name that, uh, we, that uh, we've given to the input. In, in up there, but uh, in this context, what's the name of the input? W, right? So there shouldn't be a delta x. There should be a there should be a delta w, right? Okay. So the change in the input, delta w, would be uh, the the big one minus the little one. So so that'd be four uh, minus negative two, like that. Is that right? Four minus uh, negative two. Okay, good. So what I want you to observe is that uh, if students are going to make a mistake, this is a mis this is the kind of mistake I sort of expect to see. So the double negation, right? You're subtracting a negative thing. Somehow that messes with the human thought uh, pattern, and it uh, gets lost in translation. So four minus uh, negative two is six, and then. Uh, I guess we can use y for the output because we didn't use any symbol there, so I'll say delta y. So delta y will be uh, what? How do we, what are we supposed to calculate? Well, we're supposed to calculate uh, h of 4 and then subtract h of negative 2. Okay, so then over here on the side, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. So h evaluated at negative 2, well, that would be uh, 2 multiplied by, and then that'd be 4, and then subtract negative 2, and then add 5. So that'd be, uh, what, 8 uh, plus 2 is uh, 10, and then plus 5 is 15. 
and then H evaluated at uh, 4. B2 multiplied by square root of the 4 to get 16, and then subtract 4, and then add 5. So that's uh, what? Uh, 32, uh, and then we're taking away 4 and adding 5, so that'd be 32 and add 1, so that'd be 33. Any question about this? So now that gives us enough to, uh, to answer that uh, delta y uh, should be h at 4 minus h at negative 2. So it'll be uh, uh, that one minus that one. So what is it? Is it 18? 18. 18. <coughs> and uh, therefore, therefore, we can say that uh, the average rate of change uh, is uh, delta y divided by delta x, which is uh, uh, delta w, right? I just got finished harping about it wasn't an x. Delta w, uh, so 18 over uh, 6 is uh, 3. Any question about that one? Okay, so now we're asked to find the equation of the secant. We want to find the equation of the secant. Uh, so, in particular, the secant line, right? So, whenever you're looking for a line, whenever you want to do that, you always need two things. What, uh, what kinds of things? So, what's the name of the, basically, the, the main formula that we know to find the equation of a line? The point-slope formula. And uh, what kinds of things do you need to use the point-slope formula? Hey, yeah, okay. So, uh, we need... We need a point and a slope. Okay, and uh, in fact, in fact, uh, both of these are really easy to find uh, on this exercise. So, uh, so who who knows what one of them is? A point. Okay, how do you know? A, how do you know a point? Which one? Which one? Uh, that? That's not a point. That's an interval, right? So that's uh, that's not a point. So that's a that's a that's a subset of the inputs. So how about a slope? Is there a, is a slope easy to find? I claim the slope's pretty easy to find. What what's the slope? Three. So the point of asking this question, th question two, immediately after your question one, is to confirm or deny whether or not uh, you understand that uh, average rate of change is uh, exactly the slope of the secant line. Uh, I've, I've asked this question for years and years, and, and, and sometimes the qu I've, I say the question, find the average rate of change of h on that interval, and then, and then the next question is, find uh, the slope of the secant line uh, on that interval. And uh, I've had students who can get uh, <laughs> the first one, but not the second one, and uh, the second one, but not the first one, and uh, even worst is is, is that uh, they get two different answers, <laughs> you know, uh, but they're the same thing. So the slope, the slope is uh, m is equal to three, because the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change, okay, and then a point. This one is just as easy, but uh, it's a little more subtle until you get uh, comfortable with it. So, so like uh, concerning, say, this, this input right here. Here's an input. And uh, how could I find uh, the output that corresponds to that input? How do you do it? Well, you go up to the graph, right? And then uh, however high that point is, however that high that point uh, is, that's the output, right? So uh, what is the, what if we input like four? What's the height of the output? 33, right? So, uh, so from above, from above uh, we know, uh, we know, so from one, 
We know that uh, h of 4 is 33. Therefore, what's a point that's uh, on, the, on the graph? 433, right? <coughs> so therefore, the point 433 is a point. Uh, so we could say uh, we could say that uh, uh, w one y one is uh, four thirty three. In fact, we had uh, we had two choices. I could have used negative two and fifteen. That'd have been fine. Uh, but you know, because because it's it's fine for you to choose either one. I chose the one that didn't have any negatives in it. <laughs> okay. So then uh, now you just need to know the equation. Okay, so then uh, it would be y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by, not x minus x1, but what? w minus w1. Okay, and then you just plug it in and, and you take it from there. So I leave it to you to do that. Any question about this one? So you could, uh, you could do it from there. Here's another way to play the game. You could say, uh, you could say something like, uh, all right, Let, uh, let uh, I don't know, A uh, more than 1 be, uh, be uh, unknown, so we don't know it. Uh, and uh, let P of X equal to, uh, say, X squared plus uh, 13x plus 14 uh, be defined on 1 to a. Find uh, the value of a such that uh, the average rate of change, so such that. Uh, the average rate of change of P on 1 to A is, uh, you know, wh whatever, whatever number you, you care to have. So how about 8? We want it to be 8. Okay. So let's make sure that uh, we understand what's being asked because it's a little abstract until you get um, uh, accustomed to it. So remember that, uh, that uh, in the end, average rate of change is what geometric thing? A secant line, right? It's a secant line. So now P is a polynomial of degree 2. And uh, every polynomial of degree 2, uh, th those are called quadratics. So they have that special name because they, they, they're important and come up a lot. Uh, but uh, the plot of every quadratic is a parabola. Okay, so then uh, if we were to plot this uh, this p of x, so here's the idea: is that uh, we could uh, plot this p of x, and then we've got one right here. So there's one, and we said that uh, a has to be more than one. So somehow a is like over here. And then P, uh, P, if you uh, if you uh, plot it, uh, is going to end up looking like this. You know, it goes on all the way that way and that way. And then concerning that picture, what's the secant in that picture? Can you see it? So, what we need to do is, well, for input 1, what's the output? How do we find it? Well, we go up to the graph right there, right? And then for input A, same thing. 
And so the secant is this, uh, this line here. OK. So concerning that secant, concerning that uh, secant, if, if, uh, if the scale, if the horizontal and vertical scale are the same, just eyeballing it, I'd say that the, currently the slope looks like it's about like half. OK, if the horizontal and vertical scale are the same. But uh, what do we want the slope to be? We want it to be, according to the story, what do we want the slope to be? We want it to be 8. So here's what uh, we have control over. Imagine that this is like uh, some, uh, you know, like a child's toy kind of thing. And, uh, and uh, I can grab this A and wiggle it around. And uh, as I wiggle it around, so I'm wiggling the A, the, the A there, you'd notice that the, this green point is uh, wiggling around. It's sliding up and down on the parabola. So, you know, wiggle, 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 like that. So the, the secant is wiggling as I do that. Uh, so, so what we have control over is that A. And do you observe that uh, if I move the A to the right, then uh, the secant, you know, that point's not moving, it's, it's fixed. But uh, as I move the A to the right, it starts going, starts going up and up and up. So the slope's going to get bigger and bigger. Okay, so, uh, so that's what we need to do conceptually, right? We've got we to gotta move the A far enough to the right so that uh, the slope of the secant is 8. Okay? So uh, let's, let's, let's calculate. So what is the height of this point? So if the input is 1 and the function's name is p, then what's its height? p of 1. And uh, what's the height of this one? P of A. All right. So the change in the input is, is what? A minus 1. And uh, the change in the output is uh, p of a minus p of 1. All right, so that requires a little bit of uh, work. So p of a, that just means just replacing all the x's with a's. So that's, that's straightforward enough. Uh, and then plugging in 1, well, I can do that in my head, I think. So that'd be 1 plus 13 plus 14. So that'd be uh, 28. So this would read um, a squared plus 13a plus 14. So that's p of a. And then we're going to subtract p of 1, which we just said was 28. So delta y is a squared plus 13a, uh, 13a, and then plus 14 minus 28. So that'd be minus 14. Okay, so that's the, that's the rise and the run there. Uh, so, therefore, we can say that the slope of the secant line is what now? Well, it would be delta y over delta x, right? So, therefore, uh, the slope of the secant is... Uh, delta y over delta x, which is a uh, squared plus 13a minus 14, and then this divided by uh, a uh, minus 1. OK. So now, remember, the story is that uh, what we have control over is that uh, we have control over the a. We can move it around. We can wiggle it around. and. Uh, you know, if we had a little, if we had a little gauge right here, you know, if this was like a child's toy, and uh, you know, uh, that that prints out the slope, and it currently says like uh, 6.2, you know, we'd say, ah, oh, yeah, we're getting close, right? We gotta, we gotta move it, gotta move it over a little more. 
Okay, so that, uh, that physical uh, idea of taking the, taking the A and moving it over until it reads 8, until that uh, reads 8, uh, how does that translate into, into algebra? What do we need to do? So here's a formula for the slope of the secant line. And what do we want it to be? We want it to be 8. So what do we have to do? Right. So, as a result of all of that, uh, we want to solve uh, solve a squared uh, plus 14, no, plus 13a uh, minus 14 divided by a minus 1 is equal to 8. Okay, so I leave it to you to figure that out. But, uh, but because uh, because it's just the idea that I want to make sure that you can understand. Uh, so, but you know, w one hint would be that uh, you know that numerator there is a uh, quadratic. Does it factor? Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, any questions about this one? All right. So another idea is that uh, a, a definition, a thing that we need to know. So this is the definition of decreasing. Uh, and uh, increasing, increasing. So uh, here, here's something interesting that uh, that uh, you know some, you know you, you can you can live most of your life and not uh, not realize this or know it and not even really think about it, but uh, you know when the when light passes through your eyes through your lenses, uh, the image actually gets turned upside down. Isn't that kind of crazy? So like uh, the image, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's hitting your retina is upside down, and your brain's you know flipping it back over. That's interesting. And have you ever been to one of those uh, one of those uh, like uh, crazy houses that have mirrors that turn you upside down and make you short and whatever and all that kind of stuff? I said that for some reason. So so here's the definition of decreasing. Uh, so let let f uh, be defined on now the open interval a to b. So now it's open instead of closed. <coughs> so if for every Uh, x1, x2, so two different points in the interval, open interval A to B, uh, with x1 less than x2. So if for every one of those it is the case that uh, f of x2 is, uh, uh, sorry, f of x2 one is more than f of x2, so if that's the case, then f is decreasing on a to b. All right, so now here's the thing, is that uh, a definition like that is uh, in some sense something that only a mathematician could love. Uh, so like uh, in the this, in this science world, you know, uh, mathematicians are kind of like the lawyer people, and uh, we're the ones that end up writing stuff like this. <laughs> uh, but uh, I want to try and explain to you that, uh, that this is a sensible definition. So notably, what I want you to uh, think about is that uh, x1 and x2 represent inputs, and uh, f of x1 and f of x2 represent outputs. And what we're saying is that uh, when the inputs have this order, oh look, that says x1. That should say uh, that should say x2 right there. Uh, when the when the inputs have this order, the outputs should have that order. All right. So as a picture, it would look like this.
So we've got uh, some point A, and I'm going to draw it open to remind you that uh, it's not included, and another point B. and open to remind you it's not included. And uh, then we've got, uh, we've got uh, some plot here. So I drew those open to remind you that uh, they're not included. So now uh, what we're going to do is we're in, inside of that uh, interval A to B, we're going to select two different inputs, two different ones. So how about, uh, how about like uh, this one and that one? So x1 and x2. OK. So now, uh, using, the, using the picture, how do we figure out what, to, what output x1 goes to? So this is the input axis, right? So where does it go? How do you figure it out? Well, the same thing we've done all day, right? You go up to the, you go up to the thing there up to the graph, right there, and then now you go over to the output axis. And so what's that point right there? That's f of x1. Okay, and then now for x2, same thing, right? You go up to the graph, and then you go over to the output axis. Okay, so now concerning those two, uh, those outputs, which one is bigger? F of x1 is bigger, right? So do you observe that uh, because, because this, uh, you know, because the graph is going like downward like that, no matter, no matter which x1 and x2 that, that you pick, so long as x1 is to the left of x2, it's always going to be, the, that, that's always going to be the case. So now, uh, remember at the beginning of the semester when we were talking about little arrows, Okay, so here we go. So imagine that uh, we have an arrow that's, uh, that's uh, going from, uh, from that input to that input. And I'm drawing it just a little bit above the axis so that you can see it. And, uh, you know, arrows, they've got uh, the pointy bit and uh, the, the, other, the, other, the other bit there. So those are, uh, the pointy bit is called the head and uh, the, the other end is called the tail. And so now here's the deal. What I want you to imagine is that uh, we're at uh, one of those funhouse mirror things. And uh, what the graph is going to do is it's going to, uh, it's going to uh, make a reflection of that arrow from the input axis to the output axis. Okay? So uh, now, there's going to be some arrow that fits right there. There's going to be an arrow that fits right there. And uh, is, is the head going to be pointing up or is it going to be pointing down? down, right? Because you can see that the head goes right there. So it's, it's pointing down. So here's the thing about that. Concerning, uh, concerning this, this uh, arrow, is it a positive arrow or a negative arrow? That one right there. It's positive. It's positive because it's going in the same direction as the, as the inputs. And then how about, uh, how about uh, that one? Is that a positive arrow or a negative arrow? It's a negative one, right? So, so that's what it means to be decreasing. It means that, uh, it means that uh, you, take a, you take a positive arrow and you, and you do this uh, mapping, this reflection, and bloop, it turns into a, a negative arrow. Uh, so, all right, fine. So similar, similarly for, for uh, increasing. So you can just uh, you can just copy and paste the the whole shebang, and uh, the only thing that's uh, different is that uh, is that uh, that that uh, inequality is flipped. Okay, so then I'll I'll draw the picture now.
Okay. So uh, again, we can say, okay, here's a here's x1 and x2. X1 goes there. X2 goes there. So now observe that uh, X2 was the bigger input and F of X2 is the bigger output. So, you know, this uh, positively oriented arrow uh, among the inputs uh, is a positively oriented arrow among the outputs. Right, so this would be like, a, you know, this first one decreasing, that would be like a, a funhouse mirror that turns you upside down. And uh, this would be some different funhouse mirror because if you look kind of carefully, you can see that, uh, that uh, the output arrow is, uh, is longer than the input arrow. So it kind of like, uh, you know, stretched it out. Okay, any question about this? Finally, uh, to connect it to the previous topic, uh, notice that, uh, notice that, say, in the decreasing case, can you see the secant that would go from here to there? And uh, that secant line, would it have a negative slope or positive slope? It'd have negative slope. Decreasing. And uh, the secant that would go from here to here, would it have a negative slope or positive slope? Positive slope, increasing. Notably, in both cases, the inputs are increasing. So you increase the input in both cases. Uh, the question is, is that uh, what is the consequence of increasing the input? If you increase the input and that uh, always causes the output to decrease, that's decreasing. If you increase the input and that always causes the output to increase, then uh, increasing. Good. So now we get to talk about uh, a, uh, a new topic, a fun one. Uh, so this is section, uh, I don't know what, 3.4. Yeah. So this is called uh, something like combinations. All right. So uh, here's something interesting about numbers, is that uh, you can take two numbers like uh, 13 and 14. And uh, you can take those two numbers, and there's lots of ways you can combine them to make a, a new number. So for example, you can take 13 and 14, and uh, you can add them. And now you've got a new number. Uh, you can take 13 and 14 and multiply them. Now you've got a new number. You can divide them. You can use one as an exponent. There's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, good. And the thing is, is that uh, you, can, you can do those same things with functions. You can take two functions and add them. You can take two functions and multiply them. And uh, just like when you take two numbers and you add them, you get a new number, uh, when you take two functions and you add them, you get a new function. All right? So uh, let's have an example. Uh, suppose that uh, we say let, let f of x be uh, 13x plus 14 uh, with, with domain uh, about uh, 1 to, uh, to 20, like that. And uh, let g of x be defined as x squared plus 3 on, uh, I don't know, negative 4. to uh, 10, like that. All right. So I have a question. What is f evaluated at uh, 2? What is that? Well, you just plug it in, right? So that would be uh, 
that'd be what? 13 multiplied by 2, uh, add 14. So that'd be 26 uh, plus 14, that's 40. All right. What about, uh, what about f evaluated at 0? What's that? No. This is undefined. So this is undefined. It's undefined uh, because uh, x equal to 0 is not in 1 to 20. It's not in there. So, uh, I mean, it, <laughs> so let's, let's be careful about what we're saying. In principle, could, could, you, could you plug in 0 into 13x plus 14? And sure you could, right? But that's not the question. The question is, uh, can you plug it into f? And the answer is no, because f's domain is that. So, and 0's not in there, so you can't do it. OK. Uh, similar things for, uh, for, for g, right? Uh, we could evaluate g at 0. We could do that, because 0 is in there. But uh, you cannot evaluate g at uh, uh, 11. OK? So uh, we'll say, uh, I'll say let new function, let h equal f plus g. So the function's names are f and g, and I'm saying now we've got a, a new one. It's called h. So the question is, is how, how, do, you, how do you evaluate h? How do, how do, you, how do you do it? So uh, the definition is that uh, if you want to evaluate that h at x, or if you like, you could write it like this, f plus g evaluated at x, then uh, what you must do is uh, you've got to evaluate f at x, and uh, you've also got to evaluate g at x. And then once you've evaluated that one, and you've evaluated that one, then uh, you add them up. So notably, to be able to evaluate uh, h, to be, to, to be able to evaluate the sum, you have to be able to evaluate both of them. You have to be able to, you know, f has got to be able to do it, and, uh, and uh, g's got to be able to do it. OK? So, uh, so I could ask. So I could ask, uh, you know, question two. I could say, well, what about what about um, what about H evaluated at uh, three? So how do we do it? Yeah, we're supposed to evaluate. Uh, we're supposed to evaluate F at three, uh, and then to that we're supposed to add uh, evaluate uh, G at three. So is it, is it okay for, to do both of those? It is. So then uh, we could do it, you know, so then uh, that'd be what? 39, 49, 53. So that'd be uh, 53 and then plus, now that at uh, 3. So that'd be 9 plus 3 is 12. So that'd be 65. Okay. What about, what about uh, H? Mm, evaluated at uh, 13. What about that? Is that okay? No, I can't do that. Why can't we do that? I mean, because we can evaluate F at 13, right? But what? But we can't evaluate G. So this is not defined, right? This is not defined. So that raises the question, uh, uh, what is the domain of H then? So that's the next question. How do you calculate it? How do you figure out what the domain is? What do you think? So like you can see that 3 works. Why does 3 work? 
because it's in both, right? Uh, 13 doesn't, does not work because even though it's in uh, F's domain, it's not in G's. So it's got to be in both. So what's the name for both? I'm fishing for an I word. That one, intersection. It's got to be, uh, it's got to be this. 1 to 20 intersect uh, negative 4 to 10. So we need to calculate that real quick. That can be done with the, with the picture. So 1 to 20, negative 4 to 10. So uh, negative 4 is furthest left, and it's open. 1 is next, and it's closed. 10 is next, and it's open. Uh, 20 is next, and it's open. So the first set is uh, that. And the second set is that. So we want all the points that are uh, that are in both. So drawing the picture like this uh, has the virtue that uh, now you can uh, just look at it and say, well, how about uh, that point? Is that point in the intersection? Nah. How about that one? Nah, that's not enough. It's not enough to be in one. You've got to be in both. So the, the least point that's in both is one. And then yes, no, right? So as a result of that picture, uh, what's the intersection? 1 to, uh, to 10. Open at 10, close to 10. Open at 10, right? So those are the things that uh, you'd be permitted to, uh, to plug in. So the story is similar for subtract, right? You can imagine how that works. It's uh, similar for multiply. For divide, it's a little, just slightly more complicated. Because if you want to do f divided by g, then uh, f has to be defined, and g has to be defined, and g can't be 0. All right? So here's the last thing. And we're just, I'm just going to say it, and then we'll be, we'll be done. I want you to think about it over the weekend. So here's, a, here's one thing that you can do with functions that you can't do with numbers. Okay, so here's where it uh, gets new. Is that uh, functions have inputs and produce outputs. Right? So if we have an f, uh, a function f, and another function g, then uh, visualizing it like this, if we say, OK, we're going to put x into the f machine, and then out comes uh, our name for it is, uh, is, is f of x. And uh, if we put uh, t into the G machine, then out comes the name the, that, w that we give to it is G of T. But you know, what's a, you know, an input uh, or an output? What if, we <laughs> what if we do this? What if we say that uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna give an input to the, uh, to the F machine and that's gonna come out as F of X and then we're gonna wire up that output as the input to the G machine and then what comes out on the other side? G of f of x, right? You just put whatever's in there. So uh, wiring up inputs to outputs, that's a new thing that you can do with functions that you can't do with numbers. And uh, this is called composition. And uh, this thing right here, its name is uh, G composed with f. So just like a, a plus or a minus or a what have you, that's a symbol, and it's an open circle, and it's pronounced compose. All right. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>